Okay, guys, so the last point we want to look at here is um, uh, pre flop to post flop uh, equity swings via the holder manager replayer. And I've basically just uh, selected a few, a few of the hands that I've played um, yeah, as examples for how, how equity can swing um, and very, very dramatically in Texas Hold'em. Good old suited ace king as always. Um, we will be discussing these stats in great detail here in the next video, but just as a general overview, you've got 46% equity. That's what this is showing here uh, with your holding ace king suited in this case versus a pair of jacks. The milkman here, uh, yeah, he's got 54% with those jacks. We've got this ace king suited, and as always, you know, as a principle, which we covered in the last video. Two over cards versus an under pair, it's very often a 55-45 split. 10% difference here. Um, and let's see what the action brings. Um, in most of these in most of these scenarios, I'm actually playing either a small stack strategy or a hybrid strategy. Uh, only in, I think, a few of my playing a big stack strategy. We'll see how it works out. I think we only have maybe one or two examples from a six max, uh, six max game, but um, that's unimportant. It's neither here nor there. Um, important here is the principle and that you guys see what the equity swings can look like from pre-flop to post-flop so also from the the flop to the turn so this guy open raises here uh, yeah three and a half big blinds under the gun uh, here we're playing in a 100 and we just call with the suited ace king uh, you can argue for the call again or you can argue for the raise Okay, and the jacks only call. Now that's dangerous. <laughs> I mean, calling—I mean, calling call with the ace king suited is, in my opinion, more reasonable than calling call with the jacks because, um, I mean, on over 50% of all flops, you're going to see over cards when you're holding jacks. Um, you know, even—I mean, you could say the same. You know, for ace king, I mean, it's—it's it's also good just to generally raise those up. Um, but I mean, Jack's calling cold. Basically, he's you know he's probably worried about this guy six percent early position raise here. You know, maybe he has more stats on the guy than we do, and he's potentially even calling those jacks just for set value. That, that's also possible. So, when people are analyzing hands, don't just take what coaches say for uh, for granted. Right? Look at the scenarios. Look at the you know try and get in the minds of the players. See what the situation is. You know give some general advice and say, you know, it can it can be played this way or that way. Right? There's very few cases where you can say this is the absolute truth and it must be done like this. You know, people who, who speak in absolutes, they, they very often miss the point, you know, before they even started to speak. So again, change up your play. Um, in general, re raising with Jax here is definitely not a bad idea. He you know, this guy's at six percent pre flop raise on almost six hundred hands that we have on him. Early position nine percent, but already in the middle position four, so that might be you know a bit skewed. Yeah. Anyways, unimportant. Um, it was called down like that, and just to give you guys an idea of how the pot odds look on these, the total pot is 150, and the pot odds um, for this guy's call, if he's just going to call it, uh, if this Terry guy was just going to call that one on the 150 pot, right? He's getting 1.5 to one odds. His pot odds expresses a percentage of then 40% just to make that call. He doesn't just call, he raises. So the next guy, calling a 350, right, which is a so-called two bet, just an open raise in online poker terms. The next guy here, for example, is getting pot odds of 1.43 to 1, or 41%. So anytime his equity is greater than 41% to go all in right now, he can do so profitably in the long run. All right. So we get, of course, exactly the same odds because everybody folds to us, and we make that call for 41%. And two folds, three folds, and the jacks are now getting 3.4 to 1 odds for the 350 call on a pot size of 850. I hope you guys are seeing how that works out. Right. So if he were to push all in right now, and he has greater than 23% equity, he's making a quote-unquote good call. Okay, if he has less than 23% equity, quote-unquote bad call. But again, with imperfect knowledge, it's very, very difficult to know. 
So he only calls in this scenario as we just discussed. And here comes the flop. Sevens, so it's a paired board and a two suited board and a quasi connected board. So I don't see, you know, this guy with such a uh, small pre flop raise number um, under the gun. You know, he's rarely going to be raising um, with some kind of 8 10 hands, you know, uh, 8 6 hands where he's going to have these uh, open edge straight draw kind of situations. I don't see him raising with a7 um, under the gun, right? Uh, and the fact that this guy, you know, he basically pulled a stop and go or a donk, so called donk, you know, he just called pre flop, flopped his over pair here, wants to protect against flush draws, stuff like that. Also, doesn't think he's on a 7 and he makes a bet. Uh, this is one of the scenarios where we've got, again, Big Slick suited, and we missed most completely, right? Um, but we don't put either of these guys on the 7, and we don't think that he flopped the, you know, 400 to 1 uh, full house with the 9s here. So we have a lot of equity just based on our draw. So the reason why we have a bit less equity than we normally would have, uh, it's because of this paired board. He bet seven. We're getting pot odds of 2.75 to one, right? Because we're calling seven on an $18 pot. So if we were to put that into the calculator, I think it was more or less 18. Our call is seven. Break-even equity needed is 28%, and that's also exactly what Holder Manager has here listed for us. Um, now these equity breakdowns here on these these numbers this shows you then your equity to the river right not coming into the turn or the next card for example um, this is the total equity if you were to push right now okay that's just a heads up and I think with that you know you guys have all the information you need to see the rest of these hands here and we'll try to get through them as quickly as possible there it goes and this guy here he folds you know curious as to what he might have had um, he folds and we re-raise, right? And here, you know, since I'm already betting 21 bucks here, and I've got this big draw on the flop, this, uh, you know, I'm hoping to be able to take it down right here with just a three times uh, bet size. But as it's already more than half of my stack, I probably should just push directly. Uh, just as a heads up, that's for advanced videos, but that's. Uh, I think the better move here is to, to go ahead in general and push right now if you're going to do it because you have to push in essence every turn anyways uh, given the stack sizes if you get called and I think this guy does us a favor and re-raises yeah and then we can get it all in um, yeah so you can argue for either or you know if you're trying to get the guy in like that but you know a direct push with these over cards and this flush draw kind of scenario um, is very very strong especially on a non-paired board so um, we get it in just at a 2% equity disadvantage. And I guess we hit one or the other. Yeah, we hit the spade. Now, again, here, at this point, he's got 51%. Right? We're looking at equity swings again, right? I hit that flush, okay, on the turn. But every seven uh, and every jack, right, is going to make his full house. Right? So he's still got a little equity left. And yeah, we ended up taking it down in a coin toss scenario. True coin toss scenario. <laughs> so in a 100 again, pre flop, we're at 60%, knowing both of these opponents' cards. Okay, uh, of course, we can't know that in general, but this is the replayer, so you see everything. So, given these cards here, the fact that these, this 2-4 has taken away his flush draw is very, very useful for us, and that's why we have 60% pre-flop equity. That being the case, you know, if all the cards were turned face up, that's a very clear push. <laughs> you know, you can't know that, and we just called for set value, and we actually hit. And now look at the equity swing again, right? We went from top set, and this is why, of course, we should have raised uh, here to protect against that. Big mistake here. Um, this guy calls with correct pot odds in his mind, and from 70% equity to 24% equity. Okay, just because that flush completed. Again, this is a scenario of a redraw. Okay, so we had that set, that flop set, in this case the top set, 
So that means every seven, every six, and now any running pair, right, it's going to make our full house as we just explained in the last hand. Um, this poor guy, you know, he hit his flush and he's, he's at 2% equity. Um, you know, you just can't know that. But of course, he shouldn't be um, necessarily calling cold here in the big blind with 2 4 anyways against, you know, a middle position raiser and, and one cold caller. We have more equity, right? Then we need to make that call. And therefore, it was actually a good call. And the poor 2 4, what does he do? He pushes. Yeah. And that's, you know, good for the ace 8 guy, of course. And now we're getting again exactly the same pot odds, right? 4 to 1. We make that call, and let's see what happens. Okay, so here it was again this running, um, running pair. Okay, so this is a very good hand. Um, to look at, uh, there was a mistake there on the flop. We should have definitely protected against that flush draw. Um, that call here on the turn was just good enough. It was really, really, really close. Then it worked out. Um, but this is a really good one to see, you know, what the equity swings can do, you know, given given certain scenarios and when you should protect and when you should uh, just make cold, cold calls. I think that was a very good general hand to have a look at how how crazy these equity swings can be from pre-flop to flop to turn to river. 60, 69%, 70% here. All of a sudden, you know, they make both their flushes. This poor guy's at 2%, uh, and we're all the way down to 24 again. And we end up hitting. So, yeah, a good, very good learning hand, I think. Um, here we've got eights. Um, 54% versus two overcards. Imagine that. That's the principle we talked about in the last video. King Queen makes an open raise in MP3. We call cold with eights for set value and in position, and we hit. So it's very good for us. Um, you know, he hits top pair, King Kicker. Uh, in this scenario, that's going to be good very often, and he makes a standard C bet here, just under half pot, which gives us 2.81, uh, 2.88 to one odds, and we need 26% equity to make that call in the long run. Of course, we flopped our set, and he has no flush roll, um, and we're just sitting really pretty here, equity wise, at 98%. And again, um, we should raise. <laughs> Um, to protect against that flush draw in general. Not always, but in general. And we do this time. But it was too light of a raise. It was only yeah, twice his, his size. It gives him already odds of 4.8 to 1. And that, that raise is too light, as you see here, because I'm giving him too good of pot odds. That is a... Yeah, it's a scenario where I made a raise, but he's actually getting good odds to call if, if he is on a flush draw. Okay, and that's why you need to raise that up about three times, even make pot size bets at that point to to give your opponent um, you know, only only two to one pot odds, um, you know, where he's gonna be needing thirty three percent or more to make that call. So we yeah, we make that raise and okay. You can you can also argue for min raises from time to time. Um, with flop sets, because you know it's not always the case that the guys are going to have the draws. We had 400 hands on the guy, um, bit of history, and so anyways, he you know he makes another half pot bet here. And if I don't push all in, I'm going to have to jump from the balcony. <laughs> okay, good. Finally, a reasonable raise, and then he comes over the top, thinking that he's then maybe I'm on the flush draw, and of course I'm very happy about that and push. I actually call all in. And we take down a decent size pot. The pot was when we made a move 35. We raised 229, which give this guy then 3.7, basically 3.8 to 1 pot odds to make that call, just to call it cold. In order to do so, he needs 21% equity. And at this point, he doesn't know that he's drawing dead. But you know, he comes over the top thinking that I might be on the flush draw um, or any any under pair. And okay, our final call was then five to one, more or less, almost six to one, and we need fifteen percent equity. So that means, even for example, if we were on the flush draw here, we have to call that. We have to call that because we're going to complete our flush draw, 
at 19%, which is more than the odds we're getting, or better than the odds we're getting, and that means it's a good call in the long run. Okay, again, 55-45 split, two over cards versus an under pair. NL50, it looks like. 10 player, and action comes to the jacks. And he looks quite live. He's also got a tag here. A good player, plays in position a lot, and pushes also flops with strong draws. Yeah, so good player. He's also got strong stats, and we just call cold for set value, as you're often going to do in position with small and middle pairs. We luckily get an over call here, increasing our total pot size for when we do hit our set. And we get even another caller. And now we flop this beautiful, beautiful flop, right? Relatively non-connected, non-suited board. And we've got middle set. Okay, so middle set and hold'em is, is beautiful because it gives the guy with you know, potential ace jack to hit top pair, top kicker. But middle sets and bottom sets, uh, you've really got to protect with in Omaha. In hold'em, on this kind of board, uh, you can you can even consider playing this this flop here slow. He bets at 650, and that's going to give us pot odds of 2.8 to 1, and we need 26% equity to make that call. And of course, at this point, we're again at 98% because he has to hit basically running jacks and aces. Um, you know, or two sixes or something like that. Actually, two sixes won't even help. Um, jack and a six or jack and an ace is basically all he's got. And we only call uh, as a slow play again, in position. Okay, and two folds, and there's the jack. And now this poor guy, you know, this is exactly what happened to us. Um, and some of the example hands, I believe, um, well, some previous videos, or at least in the coaching videos, where you know you've got top pair, top kicker, and then you turn your set, right? You think, of course, you've got a made hand. Uh, word to the wise here, guys: any time, any time the board pairs, you need to be thinking full house. You know, it just has to be in your mind. Any time you flop top pair, top kicker, you need to be thinking potential sets here underneath. You need to be thinking, you know, seven eights. You need to be thinking uh, ten queens. Uh, maybe in some situations, eight, you know, eight ten suited kind of situations. All that needs to be in your mind. He's hit now top set with an ace kicker, right? So even if we had the jack, we're just completely dominated. Um, and yeah, little does he know that he's almost drawing dead, right? I mean, he's hit one of the two cards he needs, but that means, you know, he hit that completes his top set, makes us a full house. So he's betting 15 into 24, gives us 2.65 to 1 odds, 27% is the equity we need to make that call if we were to call all in. Pot is now 39.75, and I think we push, did not push, only, that was probably misclick, because uh, we only have 5 bucks left here, and then he's going to come over the top. So we, we raise it to 34, Right, giving him pot odds again of 3.71, 3.76 to 1, or 21% equity is what he needs to make that call. And actually, he's got 16%, so that's a bit too close. Uh, again, probably a misclick. That should have been a push. Um, and I think he pushes for us. Yeah, 